I've been digging this build a lot ever since the 30th anniversary changes gave Arbalest intrinsic anti-barrier. It's been my go-to for every GM given that Arbalest also hard counters match game by shredding any shield regardless of element. When you and your friends are getting a fire team together and they're asking what champions and shields there are, this is the build that enables you to respond with, it doesn't matter, I got this. I'm running well and the bow is an arsenic bite with explosive head and dragonfly while the linear is a threaded needle with auto-loading vorpal but this could easily be a wolf tone draw or imperial needle with tarantula as well. Just keep in mind when assembling your build that there will be lots of void shields on the boss. The double linear setup lets you use double linear ammo finder and feel free to pause on any of these mouse overs if you're curious about anything but the TLDR of my armor mods is protective light with taking charge and elemental charge with fire and ice. I was also running particle deconstruction and throw on focusing lens as well if you have someone running stasis. We had a chaos reach warlock with a monarch and a stasis hunter with vex and vex is honestly a super ideal weapon to have in the group when someone is on arbalest with how fast it builds particle deconstruction so that arbalest is doing that extra 40% damage with every shot instead of building it up themselves. Don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe if this guide helps you out, and with that being said, let's get into the run. There are several ways to handle this first section. The YOLO strat is to get on your sparrow the moment you spawn and head straight to the end. If you're getting super unlucky and want a safer route, stick against the left wall all the way through. There's an overload right before the door, but you can skip them and still get platinum. In the next hallway, you'll have a lot of mobs followed by your first barrier champion. and then a wizard fighting an overload. Once you've proceeded into this room, a group of thralls will flood out of a doorway on the left of the room. Moving forward, you'll enter another war zone, and if you're on Arbalest, remember that the biggest things in the room are your specialty. and there are two snipers on a walkway in the back. If you have someone running Aeons, try to be mindful of when they're going in for a finisher on a powerful enemy to generate heavy ammo for your team. Once you send your ghost to the console, head for the back of the trains. There's a spot on the side that they can't get to, and in an emergency you can fall back to the end of the tunnel. Fellow stag enjoyers, drop your rift early and drop it often. With every wave, there will be snipers that set up shop on a platform mid-left. Use the breaks between the waves to pick up ammo.
If I see sniper shots coming at me, a rift is going down even if I'm already in a well. If it comes down to Last Guardian standing, stay safe and don't panic. When you get to 2 out of 3 on the objective, that's when it really gets wild. When you have 60 resilience, arc resist, the stag, a well, and a rift, you don't really have a whole lot to fear anymore. At the end of this encounter, there will always be two snipers remaining on the left, just waiting for a free kill to walk by. Don't forget to make an ammo run on your way out. The next outside section can claim a fair amount of revive tokens if you aren't careful. There's going to be a total of 5 snipers at the start. The first two are on the building behind the barrier servitor that's usually shielding them. There's two more to the right, and the doorway in front of you is the safety threshold of their range. Do be aware that more snipers will jump up to that roof and try to catch you off guard as the encounter progresses. The last sniper is hard left on another roof. Once the immediate area is clear, the next spawn trigger is on the far side of the main building that the first two snipers were on. There will be a brig on each side, a spider tank in the middle, and a whole army of snipers, champions, and other assorted flavors of death. If you're on Arbalest, your first target is... You got it, straight for the tank. 
A couple things will make your life easier in dealing with this. The first is setting up on the roof, the second is knowing where to shoot and when. You can hit the vulnerable spot in the center from here, but after you shoot a leg enough times, the armor on it will break and it won't be a weak point any longer. This dropship that flies in is just about the only thing that will challenge you up here. I went with the Not Today Dude strat of shooting the turrets off, but you can also stay out of sight until it leaves if you want to save ammo. Back to the tank, when leg armor breaks, there will be a little piece sticking out at the top that goes with it, which will give you line of sight on the next leg behind it. Next, you want to help out with whatever is left of the brigs. Hopefully your team has been working on them while you are on the tank, as both brigs and the tank need to be gone for the path forward to open. With those gone, your next goal is the Barrier Champion. Proceed with caution, there will be a lot of snipers left, half of which are probably being shielded by the servitor you're moving in on. At this point, the whole team is probably going to be running pretty low on heavy, so if you catch an overload wandering off on its own and have someone running Aeons, it's definitely worth the time to get them set up with a finisher first. When the barrier champion is down, it's mostly just clean up before you're on to the boss. Take a look at what's going on inside the boss room when the door opens. In the times I've been in here, it's completely random where the overloads will be. Sometimes they'll be right in front of the door waiting to get their hands on a revive token, sometimes they'll be off feeding the pigeons. Either way, the boss is going to remain immune and not hostile until everything else in the room is cleared out. This room to the left of the entrance will be your spot when ads are up. Be ready to annihilate the boss when the shield goes down. About every 30% the boss will teleport to the center and summon 4 void servitors that need to be taken care of before damage can be done again. If you can push that first threshold right at the start, you can save a lot of time by having both the adds that come with the boss and the adds that come with the shield phase coming at you at the same time. When you drop your well in this room, try to position it in a way where it's covering outside the doorway a little, so that anyone peeking to clear ads on the left is protected by it. One servitor left is a great time to make an ammo run. On the second shield phase, you'll have invisible marauders and overload champions.
The doorway on the left is going to be heavily contested throughout the encounter. This was possibly not the safest play of our lives, but it worked. We have the Chaos Reach clear to right side, while Squall shuts down the left. I save my well to keep us alive through anything that remains afterwards, and we proceed to finish the fight. And that is Grandmaster Devil's Lair. Thanks for watching, good luck in there, and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content.